Hello there, and thanks for joining me for this episode of A Drink From Upstream. So today, I want to talk with you about um, your understanding. Um, if you are a parent and you have teenagers or you had teenagers, you probably have heard at least, oh, maybe one time or maybe one million times, uh, your teenager saying to you as a parent, you don't understand. So they're going through something in life or they're trying to work through some dilemma with friends or at school and the pressures that they're trying to learn how to manage and all of that. And you offer some sort of uh, counselor advice or even just breathe. And, the, and they, they're they just like, you don't understand. And they get kind of ratcheted up. And of course, you as a parent recognize that they are still very early in their development of trying to assess life and handle pressure and all of that. And so you know, as a parent, that it's actually them. It's actually the teenager that doesn't understand, but you can't, you have to just kind of live with that, right? That's part of the deal. You kind of ride it out. And at some point in life, hopefully they do understand, but that's, that's kind of life um, in the, in the teenage world because they're trying to figure st stuff out. And I, I think that um, in a lot of ways, that as believers with limited understanding, we're, we're a bit like teenagers at, at times where uh, theologically we recognize, we know that God knows everything and that he understands things perfectly, that his perspective is as broad as can be. And we know that we are limited in our, our understanding. But, but even though we know these things, when it comes to particular things in life where we're trying to figure out what's going on, when we're trying to make sense out of things, we have a particular understanding. And when um, when our understanding is different than God's, kind of, a, kind of a litmus test for whether or not we are going to live in the fear of the Lord is what we do with that. Do we yield to God's understanding or do we argue with God, even in our own hearts, maybe it even comes out of our mouths, where we basically act like teenagers and shout to God that, that he doesn't understand what we're, what we're going through. And, um, and, and, and I think that m most people probably have felt that way and uh, who, who, have, who are striving to learn to walk by faith. I know I have. Um, but I've been reading in the book of Ezekiel, and uh, so Ezekiel's Old Testament prophet, and he's calling the children of Israel to faithfulness, back to covenant faithfulness, as that was the role of the prophets. And he he begins in chapter 33 with this notion of God telling Ezekiel that he's a watchman. And he says that you are making you a watchman for the children of Israel. And um, if I say to say, if I tell you to say something to them, and you tell them, and it's a warning about a coming judgment or some way, some call to repentance, and they don't un and they don't respond, then their kind of quote blood is on their own hands, and Ezekiel then is not responsible for their response to that message from God. But if as, as the watchman God tells him to say something and he doesn't say it, then those people will suffer for whatever it was that the, the errant the error of their ways, but God was going to hold Ezekiel accountable for that. And then he goes into this, I, this next section of chapter 33, where he talks about what is, talks about the righteous and the wicked. And he says that if a righteous person, uh, he lives what, he or she does what is right and, and carries out the ways of the Lord and, and then turns from their righteousness and basically gives up that um, way of life and, and walks in wickedness, that their righteousness will not be remembered. And then uh, likewise, uh, with the wicked, if a person lives unfaithfully and unjustly for uh, you know a long period of time, whatever, and then turns from their wickedness uh, and repents and turns toward the Lord and begins to do what is right, then in Ezekiel 33, it says their wickedness will not be remembered. And when Ezekiel is telling the children of Israel this, the children of Israel's response to Ezekiel, and really thus to God, is your ways are not just. In other words, they had an understanding of the way things should be that was different than the way God actually established things to be. 
that if a person is righteous, then they need to then they need to be righteous. And if a person is wicked, they need to turn from their wickedness. But a righteous person who turns to wickedness will then be wicked. And a wicked person who turns to righteousness will then be righteous. And that's the just way of God. But the children of Israel would argue like teenagers to the prophet and to God and say, that's not fair. And and yet and yet it is the way it is. That is the way God has established things on earth. So kind of the question today for you is, is there an area in your life where your understanding is different than that of God's way? And what do you do with that? Do you respond in the fear of the Lord and recognize that your understanding is limited, that your perspective is limited, that your knowledge is limited, and that God is essentially at the core of who he is, good, and he's loving, and he's faithful, and he's carrying out his perfect will, and that you can be a person of prayer, and that you can trust God, or do you just fight against that and uh, and really f- d- create distance between you and the Lord? So that's the challenge for us today on a drink from upstream. When you say to God, you don't understand, uh, then what do you do from there? And I hope that you recognize the goodness of God and the greatness of God, and that you choose to walk in the fear of the Lord, to walk in a way, live your life in a way that you show a deep reverence for God in in the person that you are. God bless you.